Hey YouTube, Warbles on a lot here with what's inevitably going to be a mad scientist video although I'm not going to wear the monocle all the way through the vid which concerns life without refrigeration it's 30 degrees now, the overnight minimum was 20.5 degrees Celsius using a laser infrared thermometer Thirty-two, twenty-nine, thirty-one point four, thirty-three degrees, thirty-one degrees, thirty degrees in the forest. Here in the clearing, thirty-nine, thirty-eight, thirty-seven, thirty-five, thirty-seven, four, thirty-two, thirty-five, thirty-eight, thirty-six, three. It's a hot day. So let's look at life without refrigeration because lighting the fire to make something get cold just seems like a silly idea and I haven't got enough solar panels to run a refrigerator but if I want a turbocharged V8 juice Tabasco Worcestershire sauce and V8 juice Give that a bit of a stir. Come on, 25.5 degrees. So I can sit here in the shade and quaff turbocharged V8 juice that's 10 degrees cooler than the air I'm sitting in. That's not a bad achievement. And it happens because I store stuff that I don't want to get hot, 23.3. Down here in the southeast corner, 24.2, on the outside of an old fashioned Cool Guardy food safe. Twenty-one point nine degrees. Twenty-one point seven degrees. That's my olive grove. The UHT milk, the eggs, everything that doesn't like getting hot, it lives down there in what is the coolest part of the hut. Because unlike everywhere else, which is insulated, the wall here is bare sheet steel located in a spot that never ever gets any sunlight on it it's always in the shade and every night it gets exposed to the coldest air available well how do I store my beer people ask well here's the lazy answer also in a spot with a sunshade so it never ever gets any sun Down here, a slab of beer gets cold soaked. 22.6 degrees. Okay. So as slack as it seems, the beer is actually colder than the vegetable juice. Okay, so that's just taking advantage of where the cold spots are. But you can go a bit further than that. When I was a kid, People used to speak about a cool guardy meat safe. This is a very small cool guardy. The theory is you put ant poison in the wells on the bottom of the feet so that ants can't crawl up it if you've got it on a flat surface. Or ideally, they're hung in the shade of a tree and you put water in that little well there so that any ants that crawl down the string get drowned. So the idea is they're ant proof. And then, in those tubes there, you anchor wires. And the wires support pieces of hessian, and the hessian is wet. And it takes a lot of energy to evaporate water. So as the water evaporates from the wet hessian, the air inside the safe cools down, and your food stays colder. Right, so the way we approximate that for beer storage conditions, 
after another drink of passive cooled tomato juice. The way we approximate that is we take our beer out of its cardboard carton, we put it on something that won't go muddy and soggy, as in an old piece of broken armoured glass. We take one piece of cast off hessian, we approach the cascade drum, and we soak the hessian. Yes, we give the watch a bath at the same time. It's okay. For those of you who haven't paid attention and read the close-up fine print, it's a Seco Solar Chronograph, and it actually runs on sunlight, and it's waterproof to 100 metres. So yeah, it won't get hurt as we soak the hessian. We've got to soak it for at least a minute. No, you're not supposed to sink. There you go, see? Even though it's been under the water, the solar electric wristwatch functions as a stopwatch. There we go. Right, so we've had a minute underwater. Then we take our dripping wet piece of hessian. And we cover up the beer. Having removed the sunshade, because at the moment we want the east-west prevailing breeze uh, from the west, from the east, to go past that hessian and evaporate the water. And to keep our wet bag wet, would you look at that? We actually have a spider living inside the water reservoir. But I'll fix that. There we go. Little tiny spider lived up the water spout. Down came the great big ugly human. And Shook the spider out. It's terrified. Let's see how it likes hydrotherapy. Put some water in there. Down came the rain and washed the spidey out. Here we go, and it's a bit cranky. Come on, there you go. How's that? I didn't actually hurt you. All I did was take away your house, but it was my cooling bottle that you were borrowing anyway. You don't stay on good terms with your local friendly spiders, they might not cooperate and eat the mosquitoes for you. They might even bite you when you're not looking. So, we get some water in our bottle. We don't need the bottle absolutely full, otherwise it won't actually drip. Yeah, that's about it, that's good. Might just clean the spider webs out of there. If only for the look of the thing. So now we take our water bottle, we hang our water bottle in place, and we set things up so it drips on the crown. And I happen to know by dint of devious careful research that so what we need is 40 drops per minute. But anyway, just so we know, it's 4 minutes to 12. 18.7 degrees on the outside. Twenty-one point four degrees on the inside. So as you can see, it is in fact working. As primitive as it is, because it's in the right spot, it's in the right location. I actually set this place up originally with the thoughts of putting a platform on here and having a hatch which opened into the hut and having the cool guardy safe that's currently sitting on the ground on the floor of the hut permanently living under the awning there with hessian screens and a water tank but i never got around to doing that however in this junk cluttered space between the veranda post and the spare car seat, there is a two foot gap. 
that is a really fortunate thing. And I say that because yesterday I was given a functional set of hen's teeth, you might say. A bag of rocking horse shit. Something so rare that most people have never heard of them and those who have heard of them have only thought of seeing them in a museum. And it's two feet wide. 19 inches deep. And it came in a flat pack. And the flat pack arrived in Glen Innes in a bullock wagon in the year of our Queen, Victoria, Regina. This Queen's Head Australian galvanised steel plate on the base of the water tank of the Trafalgar size 2, cold safe, patented, number 3410-1811, 15436-1811, Nine six two four eighteen eighteen W J Rawlings South Australia, and as you can see, it has fly wire inside the cabinet. We have a functioning door lock. We have two compartments for our food. We have removable screens, which has currently got terry toweling on it. When that wears out, I'll go back to using Hessian. The ants can't get past the water trap in the moats on the ceramic feet. The water tank sits on top, and we have the original flow regulators. each of which is hollow, tapered, and has a hole in it to communicate with the hole in the fitting leading from the reservoir. And the way I know we need 40 drips per minute is because that's what it says on the instructions, which gives the full instructions of how to turn it from a flat pack into an actual tank, place the safe where it is in a current of air or in the open if possible, fill the top tank with water, damp the screens well and then regulate the taps to a slow drip, not more than 40 a minute, as it is only by damping the cloth you'll obtain the best results. To ensure satisfactory results, the top tank must be kept well supplied with water and placed as level as possible. By keeping the water in the top tank clean, the cloth will be saved. Should the taps clog at any time, slip the plugs out and wash them. In the case of taps getting out of order, a piece of flannel hung over the sides will answer the purpose. When new cloths or screens are required, reorder to size of safe, or refer to size of safe before ordering. A final touch with this one is a tray supporting a towel to keep the mosquitoes out. And a critical bit of fine tuning is making sure that the taps actually drip on the tops of the fabric screens. So there she stands, the 1835 South Australian made Trafalgar cold safe, which came to Glen Innes in a flat pack on a bullock wagon in 1840. Came to town with a Fakes family, it stayed with a Fakes family until around about 2000. And then when my mother was building a house on a property called Bargwell, which used to belong to the Fakes family, Neville Fakes sold the cold safe to my mother. And because she has a couple of thousand watts of solar panels on the roof, she has an electric refrigerator and therefore yesterday she gave me the 182 year old evaporative cold safe. And when I get it set up, I will make another video showing how effective it is. Set up with the water tank full. The drip taps dripping, a bucket underneath the bottom collection tray and the ant trap moats full of water. 33 degrees, 32.8, 32.3. Backup thermometer says 33.4 degrees.
27. 26.2. I'll drink to that. Label out. Uh, 18.35 Trafalgar. Warbles on a lot to YouTube. Ciao.